Hello, I'm Max from the... Okay, nope. Hello, I'm Max from the Baltimore Spirits Company. Today, we're going to take you on a journey to Mortlock Distillery in Scotland. If you stick around till after the music, I promise I won't do any more Scottish accents. Thank you for putting up with that and welcome to Finer Things episode four, where today we're going to talk about Mortlock Distillery, particularly their distillation methods. So Mortlock was founded in 1823 by James Findlater. It was passed around a little bit after that until George Cowie became the main proprietor in 1867. He was an engineer, he kind of upgraded the distillery a little bit, but most importantly, he left it to his son to run in 1896, 1897, and that was Alexander Cowie. And that's really who created the distillation method that Mortlock is very famous for. Uh, a couple of little points of history here. William Grant, who went on to found Glenfiddich, worked for the Mortlock Distillery for about 20 years before the founding of Glenfiddich. So certainly a lot of heritage involved. Diageo uh, eventually had control of the brand in the 1900s. I believe it was 1923 when John Walker and Sons bought the brand. So uh, now under the control of Diageo for a long time, they were just producing single malt that went into the Johnny Walker blends. But in 2014, Diageo decided to release Mortlock back under its own name. They did four expressions and they're all distilled the same way. They're aged differently, different ages, different barrels, that kind of thing. Um, but the kind of... Most interesting thing is their 2.81 distillation method. If that sounds kind of funny, most people are double distilled in Scotland. There are some triple distillation. Obviously, Irish are very famous for it. And uh, kind of across the world, you see different triple distilled things. We've done one. Um, don't tell anybody, it's not out yet, but uh, it's coming. Morlock does 2.81 distillations. So I know I'm kind of glossing over their history a little bit, and I like to talk a lot of history on these videos, but we're gonna do something a little more technical today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about distillation and I have some uh, fancy expensive props here. So this is a uh, Baltimore Spirits Company. We have our wash still or a stripping still. Um, we're gonna try and keep our terminology consistent here through the video. So the wash still is what you put your fermented grain in. That's where you do your stripping run. And the stripping run is a lot like what it sounds. It's where you strip out kind of all the alcohol, you do the biggest separation of uh, the kind of mash and then the distilled alcohol. So you distill everything, you kind of keep it all together. And um, and then you do a second distillation. Now for us, we start with a thousand gallons over here in our wash still. We do a, dist a distillation, which results in 250-ish gallons of spirit. And then we put that spirit into our spirit still. And that is where uh, we get our main spirit out. Now, when we redistill, we go through a couple of things. The first stuff that comes out, it's called the heads. So we have the heads here. You know, I'm gonna, one more thing. Everything, 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 which do you prefer? This was the mistake card and this is the one I'm using. So we take everything out of the wash still, and we put it in our spirit still, and then we distill it again. The first stuff that comes out is called the heads. It's not very good. We usually collect that and we'll put it back in the spirit still. Then the hearts comes out and the spirit changes over the whole run and the middle is generally the best tasting stuff. That's called the hearts. So this is what we'll actually keep and put into barrel. And then we have the tails and the tails is stuff that comes out towards the end of the run. It generally doesn't taste as good. Uh, we would take the heads and the tails from our spirit run and then next time we put everything over from a stripping run, we'll put the heads and the tails from the last run back in. That creates some more consistency and consistency and flavor profile. And uh, it also helps us recoup some of the alcohol that's in there. So it helps our efficiency a little bit. Hearts go into barrel. So this is kind of the, uh, the very simple, easy double distillation method. And this is a lot like what you would find in uh, most common pot distilled single malt scotches. Uh, we talk a lot about how our whiskey is distilled a lot like a single malt scotch, and this is this is kind of how we do it. So heads, hearts, tails, everything. These gone. Um, 
Now, Mortlock, it's going to get a little crowded. I might even uh, might even stand up for this. So, okay. Mortlock Distillery distills 2.81 times, and that was instituted by Alexander Cowie when he moved into the distillery in 1897. He was a doctor. He was living in Hong Kong before his father, George Cowie, became ill. So he moved back to Scotland to take over the distilling business and uh, implement some of his own ideas. And when he was a doctor, he would be messing with kind of potions and mixtures and ratios. Uh, you know, there was no, no FDA to approve these drugs yet, so they were uh, winging it. Or at least uh, that's what it seems like. So he, he was kind of used to doing interesting mixes and putting a lot of kind of thought and detail work into how he wanted to kind of mix a tonic together. So he wanted to kind of bring some of those ideas into the distilling world. And what I'm about to show you started when he moved in in 1897 and it's still how they do it today. So they have some stills. They have this number one wash still. This is gonna get really crowded. We made these cards too big. They have this number two wash still, and they have this number three wash still. Get out here, Mortlock. So we've got a 7,000 liter still, two 7,000 liter stills, and then a 16,000 liter still. Now the simple thing is this wash still number three and this spirit still number three. So these are linked, three and three. Now they do something like we do here. They take everything off the stripping run and they put it in the spirit run, and then they do a traditional hearts cut where they have heads, they have the tails, they have the hearts. The hearts will come off the spirit still, go into barrel, and then the heads and the tails, they'll put back in with the next run, much like us, and redistill, do a new hearts cut off the spirit still. So that is part of what will end up going in the barrel. So that is, uh, that's that. We've been wearing a, we got everything. We got tails, we got heads. That comes off with uh, some hearts. Great. Get out of here. Wash still number three. Wash still number two and one. Okay. We also have a spirit still number two. We put that here. And uh, we have their smallest still, which is called the Wee Witchy. And you can tell it's the wee witchy because it has a hat on and it's a witch's hat. And that's how you know. So we've got wash still number one, wash still number two, spirit still number two, and we've got the wee witchy. The wee witchy being 8,000 liters is their smallest spirit still. Uh, 9,000 liters on spirit still number two. So here's where some things get a little funny. Uh, in the stripping runs of wash still number one and wash still number two, uh, they don't just do the everything thing where they distill everything out, collect it all together and move it into a spirit still. They do, as they did, they would describe it as a heads and a tails. They don't really collect the hearts in a stripping run, but the first stuff that comes off, they are going to call the heads. So we've got heads here from spirit still, from a wash still number one. And we're going to, that's going to be about 80% of the stripping run. So 80% of the stripping run from spirit still number one goes into, sorry, wash still number one goes into spirit still number two. And then this heads the from here with about 80% of wash still number two is going to go also into there. So we've got 80% of both stripping runs going into spirit still number two. Tails. Uh, tails is about 20%, so the last 20% of alcohol coming off the, the stripping stills. So the tails from wash still number one are going to go into the wee witchy, and the tails from wash still number two are also going to go in the wee witchy. Now we get to do a nice little uh, hearts cut on spirit still number two. So we've got the heads from both stripping runs in here. We're going to do a traditional spirit runs where you're going to have uh, the heads, the hearts, and the tails. And we're going to move the hearts over here, uh, which is where, we're, this is where we're just saying we're keeping uh, all our hearts here. This is gonna be, I don't even know if it's in frame, but if it's not, over here is where we're keeping the spirit we're gonna put in the barrel. So uh, now we've got, we got heads and tails off this, which we will, uh, 
come back around and put back in the next spirit run here. So we're taking heads from these two, putting them in here, and then adding the heads and the tails off the spirit run from which it came and put it back in there. So we've got a heads and a tails from a spirit run and then two heads from two wash stills. Uh, and then the wee witchy, which has uh, tails from two stripping runs, 20% uh, each. We're gonna distill this. We're gonna distill these things and we're gonna take everything with a G off uh, and we're gonna take everything and then we're gonna put it back in here and we're gonna distill it again and we're not gonna add anything else. So uh, we take this and we distill it. So we, we took the, the tails from these two, these two, the wash stills here, and then we put it in the wee, wee witchy and then we distill it and then we put it back in the wee witchy again. And then when we distill it a second time, we're gonna go ahead and take everything again and we're gonna, everything with a G, uh, take it off and we're gonna put it back in the wee witchy again and then distill it a third time in the wee witchy. And the third time we distill it, we're gonna take the uh, heads, put it in green. We're gonna take the heads and we're gonna take the hearts. And the hearts are gonna go over here into our barrels. Now we got three hearts from three different stills. One was double distillation. This was double distillation with only heads from two different stripping stills, except that we added the heads and tails in from after. And then of course, this is triple distilled tails. So actually quadruple distilled because it was distilled tails from two different stills. So this distilled, this distilled, this distilled three times. And on the third time we get the heads and we get the tails and we collect them separately. We put the hearts over in the barrel and then we put the heads and the tails from the wee witchy back in the wee witchy. Now, when we take just the tails from both of these stills and, and put it in the next for the next round of uh, distillation. So anyway, I have it all written down on a really handy chart, which I'm gonna go ahead and put in now. What? Great, so now you have kind of a visual aid. You can kind of see how all of this works. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little of that, which brings us back to Mortlock. So this particular expression is 12 years old. Uh, they call it the wee witchy. It's a little um, nod to their small still. And you know, and it smells, smells like a beautiful space eyed scotch. Um, why don't we make a drink with it and maybe have a sip of it and see what all that weird stuff did. I can already hear you people in the YouTube comments saying you shouldn't make cocktails with fine spirits. Well, uh, you should make a YouTube channel and you can call it Let's Not Have Any Fun Ever. But this YouTube channel has fun and uses good spirits in good cocktails and it's awesome. And I uh, also recommend you just do that too. Uh, we should at least have a little taste of this, see what all the fuss is about. It's been distilled 2.81 times. Um, and the kind of fun thing about it, after tasting it, and you may have noticed I've tasted it before, is that, you know, if you put it in a lineup with 50 single malts, it wouldn't jump out at you as some weird oddball out. It tastes like a lovely space side scotch. There's a little peat. Uh, they say that the kind of wee witchy quadruple distillation thing adds some meatiness. A little bit of punch to the face. It is a worm tub uh, distillery, which means they have kind of an old fashioned way of cooling their distillate, something we do here as well, which makes it a little more sulfury and a little more punchy. So it is kind of soft and delicate and beautiful with the extra distillation, which typically makes something lighter. But the fact that the extra dist distillation is done with the tails, which are just kind of more um, funky in general, and then it's a warm tub distillation means it's kind of this nice blend of, you know, the caramel, the vanilla, the honey, all that kind of nice stuff, but also some really great ripe orchard fruit um, and kind of sulfur compounds, which, you know, might contribute to some people saying that it's kind of a meaty scotch, um, which is what they kind of think the wee witchy does to it. Uh, but it's lovely. And, you know, the truth is if they distilled it in any other way, it wouldn't be the exact same. You'd be able to taste the difference. And that's one of the fun things about distillation is there's not necessarily a right or wrong to a lot of the decisions we make, but whatever those decisions are, are going to lead to different spirits. And that's kind of fun. And it is very nice. So 
Today we're going to make a Blood and Sand. It is one of the very few classic cocktails that actually calls for scotch. Uh, originally from the 1930 Savoy cocktail book, it is an equal parts cocktail. Uh, you are going to need a scotch. And I would like, I kind of would say, you know, something middle of the road, a Highland scotch, a Speyside scotch, or a blended scotch would be nice. Probably not an Isla that's really peaty or anything, although always fun to play with and, and give it a shot if that's your thing. But I think the recipe really calls for something a little more balanced and nuanced. Uh, obviously we're using Mortlock today. Uh, sweet vermouth, this is the Wine Collective's Vermouth Red. Uh, one of my favorite sweet vermouths. Look for it coming out soon. And a cherry liqueur, and we will be using cherry herring, which is probably uh, the most common recommendation uh, for something like this. It's not the Luxardo, um, the Luxardo cherry liqueur, uh, cherry herring would be more on target here. So lastly, we'll need an orange. Before I get to my orange juice, I'm going to go ahead and take a peel off so that I have uh, one to work with. Now these are blood oranges. The Blood and Sand cocktail was named after a 1922 bullfighting movie, a uh, silent film starring the then silent film star, The Latin Lover, um, Rudolph Valentino, I believe his name is. Uh, but a lot of people use blood oranges in this to kind of account for the name. So we're going with the blood orange. Aha, uh -huh. you know, I was worried it wasn't gonna be very bloody, but it really is, that's nice. Um, try not to make a mess here, we only need three quarters of an ounce. This is not uh, hand juicing very well, so luckily got my handy dandy juicer here. Three quarters of an ounce, and since I already told you it was an equal parts cocktail, uh, that probably spoils the rest of it for you. Oh boy, I tried not to make a mess, but that's not uh, how this is going to work today. So sorry for whoever has to clean this up. And I hope I don't get any blood orange juice on my sweater. Okay, boy, that's just really, really pretty, isn't it? Okay, three quarters of an ounce. And I do have enough into the shaker. We'll put this in a shaker since it is juice based, it is shaken. Three quarters of an ounce, the cherry herring. Three quarters of an ounce sweet vermouth. And three quarters of an ounce Mortlock 12 year wee witchy scotch. We are going to fill our tin with ice. And quick shake. General advice on shaking, unless a recipe says a gentle shake or something that's already watered down, is to shake it until your tin is so goddamn cold you can hardly hold it anymore. But you really want ice cold, you want good dilution. We're going to strain. You can double strain this if you want it a little prettier. Uh, we're not doing that today because this is just some at-home cocktail making. You know, if we were doing this in the bar, we double strain it for you. Uh, we've got our pretty little orange peel. We're going to express it over the drink, get some of those lovely orange oils in there, wrap it up. See if we can get it to sit nice for you. The blood and sand. Thank you for coming to my TED talk on Mortlock distilling. Um, I hope you learned something or at least got very confused. Uh, make this cocktail if there's anything you guys would like to uh, see me do in the future on this show or any spirits you think I should be talking about, please put it in the comments. Um, please like and subscribe, goes a long way. We're trying to do a lot of regular content these days and it makes a big difference. Um, yeah, and hopefully I'll uh, see you in the gallery sometime soon or at least on the net. Cheers. Maybe we could drink together. I'll make a cocktail, you can make it with me. Maybe we could drink together. I'll buy ingredients and teach you how to use them. We can get drunk in the virtual world. The drinks are awfully good and you don't have to tip. You don't have to tip me. You don't have to tip me. You don't have to tip me. You don't have to tip me.